Welcome back to Sunday AM. Over the past 17 years, John Muldoon has become a bona fide Galway legend, making over 300 appearances for his native Connacht rugby team and captaining them to an historic Pro 12 victory last season. Yes, he's here this morning to talk about his fascinating career and his new link up with another famous institution of the West. John, you're very welcome. Do you Morning. want to tell welcome, us about John. that first of all? Yeah, um, obviously, Supermax is a, a household name in Galway and across the West of Ireland and Ireland in general. And I think um, when everyone goes away uh, for a while and spends a bit of time, especially from the West of Ireland, Supermax is the, one of the first port of calls on the way home. And um, I suppose, from my point of view, they've recently. Um, I suppose a new fresh range on offer, which is a little bit more healthier than um, some of the other options <laughs> on there. But it's like everything, a balanced life, balanced diet, and there's a, it caters for everything now. So they've uh, a new fresher range, which is a bit healthier um, than what you expect. Um, <laughs> and it, it's, I suppose, it helps everything everyone. in moderation, yeah. as Heather was just Absolutely. telling us. Yeah. In the yeah. So, so you're, allowed, you're allowed to partake from time to time now? Every now and again, yeah. It's, um, you can't beat a bit of Supermax. And uh, <laughs> I think from, when you're from the west of Ireland, it's one of the things you look forward to when you go home. Coming home. Yeah, the institution, isn't and it? And you've just come home because you just got married. Yeah, we got, I got married. I know you want to talk rugby, but <laughs> I've got my own go agenda. Go ask here. about the wedding. Yeah. <laughs> I chewed out for I a while. Got married, the women uh, of Connacht, they're still in mourning, oh, I'm sure. Oh, geez. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, we got married uh, five weeks ago uh, to Lorna, so we had a great, great couple of weeks. Um, it's unfortunately for uh, for the ladies of uh, of sportsmen, they have a very small window, so yeah. um, you have a couple of weddings every June to get through. So we had a great time. Yeah, um, we went away to the Caribbean for two weeks' holidays as well, so it was good. You made um, the most of it. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, absolutely. But um, unfortunately, you're still conscious of training, though, aren't you? Absolutely. I mean, at yeah. your level, um, you have to be. It, it's like everything, you, you want to take a break and you want to, I suppose, let the mind get fresh again, but you know if you do too much or not enough, I should say. So, so you're, <laughs> you're, yeah, you're in honeymoon with Lorna and people think honeymoon's that's lovely, uh, you know, sumptuous meals, lazy. a few drinkies, lazy by the pool. Was it, was it that way for you, though? Um, no, unfortunately <laughs> not. Uh, I think the first day we arrived, we flew into Miami and uh, got up at around 8 o'clock and I actually went to the gym in the morning. Um, that Sorry was the first day and I think... Over the next two weeks, so 14 days and holidays, I, I probably did about 10 sessions. Wow. Um, did she have to lie in when you were in the gym? Uh, she came a couple of times, in fairness. So she, um, couples who trained together and all that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it was, it was good. And I think more so just from my own mental health and my own, um, I suppose, well-being, it's nice to be able to go um, do something get a sweat on and mm. then be able to sit by the pool and enjoy a beer and, enjoy and maybe it. enjoy some box. food. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And it's just for your own. But I suppose, like everything, you come back to training and the more you do uh, in that time off, the easier it should be. Yeah. So it's John, it's easy. been an incredible story with Connacht and for you, for you personally. But the, the interesting thing from you is that you're not from rugby stock or, or Connacht rugby stock. You're from, from hurling country, is that yeah, right? Very much so, yeah. Um, Joe Cannon, obviously, who has been a stalwart for Galway over the last few years, and um, he lives about five or six hundred yards down the road. Bearing in mind now, he's considered like my next door neighbour because yeah. I'm out in the country. Mm, of and uh, Damien Hayes, who has a uh, couple of all stars for Galway as well, and obviously um, Joe's brother Ollie, and there's lots of uh, players, or lots of, I suppose, people I grew up with who um, won lots of medals with Pertumna. Uh, for All Ireland's club, All Ireland's they won, and they they're an exceptionally good team. And um, I tried to play hurling when I was younger with them. And I, uh, fairness, you weren't, you were, you uh, know, you you were an All Ireland minor pal, and yeah. you're being modest there, John. Well, I was lucky. I think my dad said that um, the coaches were keeping uh, keeping everyone happy by having me there. But um, <laughs> look, it was it was actually a great time. Um, I knew at the time that I was leaning towards Roby, even though I'd only picked up Roby three or four years uh, before that. It's quite funny, the Lions is just over and um, I picked up Roby a couple of months before the Lions, uh, the 97 Lions mm. started. And that's what really dragged me in was the whole hysteria of the Lions and yeah. everything that goes with it. And that just pulled me in. And two years later, I'm in Crow Park uh, with uh, Galway Miners and it was phenomenal. But that day I was walking out knowing that I was probably going to give up hurling after that. And yeah. I think I played one game after that and that was it. So it was a great time. And um, 
I don't want to sound bad, but it was a very simple time. Yeah. Um, knowing that I wanted to try and pursue a rugby career, which obviously I didn't expect to get to where I was, uh, where I am now, but um, we had a great time. Um, it was just a throwback to the old days. Of, uh, it was quite funny. On a Sunday morning, we'd be training, and one of the lads was driving. There was four of us from the club. Trainer would be on at 10 o'clock, and we wouldn't arrive home till 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Our parents would be like, where were you all day? <laughs> We didn't know where we were. Yeah, we were yeah. just getting up to mischief, and it was it was good. It was yeah. good fun. Uh, you go into to rugby then, as you say. You go to, to GMIT, and, and as I said, Connacht wasn't its rugby stronghold yeah. then. Was there a rugby team there? Uh, there was, um, not very much. One yeah. that um, probably it's ironic how you get breakthroughs. I was playing with the underage Ireland team, and um, I went to play with the college, and I turned up for training uh, with the college, and there was four people there. Um, which wasn't the greatest. Uh, Two aside. To, yeah, so the, the four others decided to go to the bar, which most college students enjoy. And um, I turned around to one of my mates and I said, look, I need to do something today because I've trained in the following week up in Dublin with the Irish under 19s. I need to do something. And um, lo and behold, we started training, uh, just doing a bit of running and um, Galwegians. We were using Galwegians facilities and um, they were about to train their under 20s team. And, um, the ironic thing is we had played them a couple of weeks ago. I was playing with Nina, who were just outside Pertumna, uh, over the border. Mm. And I was like, oh, God, don't train with these. They're terrible. And uh, we'd beaten them well a couple of weeks before that. But um, John Kingston, who was the Galwegian senior coach at the time, happened to be there, saw the training, invited me in training with the senior team the following week. Um, obviously, Eric Elwood, all these fellas were all playing with uh, Weegians and they were flying high at the time. And... Um, they asked me to train, I trained, asked me to come back. Within a couple of weeks, I was training with them. Within a couple of more weeks, 18, 19 years of age, I'd signed to play with them the following year. Uh, year. Unfortunately, that was around the time the Connacht tried um, to get disbanded by the RFU. It almost went out of existence. Mm. Absolutely, and um, one man's misfortune is another man's gain. And through that, I got training with, this, with the Connacht senior team. It happened very quick, all in the space of about six weeks. And from um, being with a junior club in, in Munster and Nina, um, to getting an opportunity with Galwegians, to sign them with Galwegians, to suddenly train them with Connacht. It was very mm. surreal um, as an 18, 19 year old to be asked in to train with Galwegians and to see some of your heroes and then to be training with them with Connacht six weeks later was, was uh, strange to say the least. You talked about a Galway institution earlier in, with the whole Supermax thing and, and yourself. How important has been the sense of place in Connacht and everything you've done. I'm fast forwarding here to what Pat Lamb and you guys have done in the last few years, talking about you know the five counties coming together. And you go down to Galway now, and the matches are huge and people love it. And they've really it's it's become this huge phenomenon. And that's winning the trophy. Which I mean, fast forward, go back to when you, the stories you're talking about about trying to get things started to that moment. Yeah, it's it's beyond even comprehension, isn't it? The way things developed. Uh, at times it is. Yeah, um, I think. We get kind of, um, we become a little bit insular when you're involved in a, I suppose, in a squad and you think that it's, um, it's going to happen for you all the time. But when you actually take a step back and you realise, geez, um, that was some achievement to come from where we were, mm -hmm. being tr close to disbandment in 2003, bottom of the league a couple of times, years in a row, and then suddenly um, you're in a Champions. final in Edinburgh against Leinster, who have been the best um, team in Europe for probably five or six years before that. And um, there's always a saying in sport that uh, you, you need to lose one to win one. But yeah. uh, thankfully, that didn't happen for us. But yeah, yeah look, it was, it was It's a lovely to see you beaming looking at those know, shots. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's the reward. That, that was um, one of the we're best on, We're almost out of time, John. You have a new coach yeah. coming in. You've signed on to stay for another year. What is the future for you now? How, how do you see it? Yeah, obviously, we're very sad to see Pat go. Um, he was here for four years. But we have a new man, Kieran Kane, coming in. Um, we met him. He was over a couple of weeks ago. He won't be back over. He's, he's finishing up his job um, over in New Zealand, and it's very exciting. New coach, um, new beginning for a lot of people, and um, very exciting for him as well. Mm. He, he's a little bit older. Um, first job abroad and first big job for him. So big shoes was, to fill. Yeah, and he's very excited uh, when he gets over a few weeks ago. And it was there was a nice buzz around the place. So yeah, looking forward to getting stuck in again this year, and looking forward to going into my 17th year. 17 wow, years. that's incredible. Longevity. Done. Well done on all your achievements over that time of Connacht. Thanks Thank for joining you. us this morning. Cheers.